I know this is gonna sound so absurd, but before I can just show you my penis, I do have to kind of explain a few things about it to you. Okay. Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, I'm Alan Sepinwall, Chief TV Critic at Rolling Stone and host of the Too Long Didn't Watch podcast. And it is my pleasure to bring you, even virtually, the stars and creative team behind the absolutely fantastic FXX comedy, Dave. Please welcome series star Gata. Please welcome executive producer and writer Saladin Patterson. Please welcome co-creator, executive producer, and writer Jeff Schaefer. Hey, everybody. And, and in addition to being co-creator, executive producer, and writer, he plays the title character Dave himself. Please welcome Dave Bird. Hi. Hey. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's let's get off to a friendlier start than that, guys. <laughs> Dave. What kind of TV did you watch growing up? Uh, just the things that pop into my head are Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Seinfeld, Friends. Those are the things that are popping into my head. Martin. So at what point did you have it in your head that you might want to actually make a television show? Honestly, when I was like, a, a, my as long as I can remember as a young boy, I wanted to be like a comedian. And um, when I envisioned what that looked like, it was not like me on stage doing stand up. It was always like movies or TV. So uh, I don't know that I was thinking I need to make a TV show about my life, but I, I was always like, I want to be a comedian. And I think my favorite version of that is on screen. So I feel like I've always kind of known that from my earliest memories. And was I'll, there, a you know, I'm sorry, I just want to point out two of the shows that Dave mentioned that he watched as a child were shows that Jeff worked on. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I just, my AARP card literally materialized right in front of me as it was talking. I found the right guy though, I found the right guy. It's good, good point, good point. It's well, not, I mean, to work with your grandpa. All right, here we go. <laughs> Watching Curb though, was, it, was there a point at which you looked at that and said, oh, wait a minute, like this, I could do something in this kind of format. There was a moment I remember at my friends, uh, the twins, uh, their house watching. For the first time, I had like a revelation. I was like, "Oh my god!" Like I kind of behave like him. I'm not. I don't think it's behavior as much as it is perspective. And I think from the very first time that I met you, Dave, the thing that intrigued me the most was I saw that there was a lot of Larry in you, and meaning that whether you were a rapper or whether you were an ice cream salesman or an accountant, the way you interacted with the world, the way you had problems with things that people may not have problems with, the way you decided to just scratch that itch on the back of your neck that most people would just not scratch yeah. reminded me a lot of the way Larry views the world. And that was what was, that's what immediately drew me to you. I like holding people accountable. <laughs> um, Gator, would you say that he, he tends to hold you accountable? Oh yeah, definitely, man. When we on stage, if I mess up or anything, it's like mid show. I'm getting the eye contact, like, <laughs> "Boy, you gotta get on your shit, boy." <laughs> like you up here with the best, like, yeah. So I'm always feeling the pressure, man. But it just makes me better. Saladin, what were your expectations of what the show would be like, and and did did the actual experience of working on it meet those expectations? Probably, as many people may do, I probably underestimated just how you know, like thoughtful and and deep and meaningful he had wanted the show to be um and that that came across very clearly when I first met with him and Jeff you know and I kind of saw what they were trying to do with the show the things they wanted to say things they wanted to explore both with Dave's character but also you know with the world that he was going to be in in terms of being an outsider in hip-hop um and so you know it, it's certainly look I am very happy when I hear people say things like they were surprised with, you know, how we tackled emotion, how we tackled, you know, character things, um, because I think that's a natural kind of response um, to the show. And that's, you know, pretty much what I learned really quickly. First time I met Dave, you know, he's he's a lot deeper than than what people most people would think. Not as deep as he thinks he is, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, qualify. I qualify that. Deeper than most people think, but not necessarily as deep as he thinks he is. <laughs> and Dave, how do you feel about uh, being described in that way? You know, I, I have, it's funny, like I'm looking like right in my perspective is my, like the cards that I put on the wall for the writer's room. And one of the cards says, do I lack all emotional depth or am I the deepest? <laughs> That's literally what one of the cards thinks. And it's like, 
I constantly feel like, man, am I like super deep or like not deep at all? Like, cause, I, and I think that's a lot, a lot of stuff that's kind of a big theme in the season. Um, and I, I don't know the answer. I think it's kind of, you know, I'm ever evolving and it's, I'm really thankful that I have smart people bring out the, I think there is depth in there that just needs to be uh, like tugged, you know, or I'll just watch sports center. <laughs> Well, Gaeta, you've known Dave the longest, so maybe you're the best suited to answer this question. Is he deep or is he not as deep as he thinks he is? Oh, man, I think he's deep, uh, very deep. And I think he uh, puts it out there more than anybody because the stuff that he's comfortable with telling people about himself as far as insecurities, that's deep in itself. Like, if you really know Dave as a person, he made a whole song about his ex-girlfriend. It's a song called Molly, one of my favorite songs from him. That's deep. Like for anybody to put their emotions out there and their insecurities out there, as much as he's uh, funny and all that makes us laugh, you just really got to sit back and take note of the gestures and the moments that he's really vulnerable. Like putting me on TV, letting me cry in front of the world about mental health, that's deep. You know what I'm saying? So my boy, my boy, he's, he's deep, man. To me, as much as we think he's funny, he's, he's a deep person, he's smart too. And, and just to, because Gata brings up a very, very good point. And I think this is one of the things that people have responded to about the show is the authenticity. Mm -hmm. And the authenticity of the show comes from, frankly, the bravery of Gaeta and Dave right here mm -hmm. who are like showing themselves. And like, they're not, they're revealing these things about themselves that are true and they're not doing it behind a character. They're not, this is not a period piece. They're not, you know, it's not Chicago in the 1920s. This is them. Right. Um, there's such a thin membrane between real them and these characters. And it's like, I mean, to me, it's like, the same way people like going to the car wash because you can stand outside and look in the window and see the car get washed or like a glass bottom boat so you can see what's going on. Like this show is the glass bottom boat of our comedies. You get to see right inside, like see what's really going on. And that's a really brave thing for two people who are not, who, you know, this is really their first TV shows. Yeah. And yet they're standing right there saying, these are my issues. These are my problems. Here they are. And I think people really responded to that. Well, I mean, I've wondered about that, which is, were there any subjects for either you, Dave, or you, Gaeta, where you felt a little bit protective about working them into the show, or were you basically willing, as Jeff said, to sort of put it all out there and, and let the audience decide what they wanted about it? Gaeta, you want to begin? Oh, yeah. I was definitely uh, hesitant about putting my story out there about the mental health awareness and everything, because number one... I'm black talking about it. Number two, it's embarrassing at times, you know? Like I used to think that it'd be embarrassing to tell people that I have a mental problem. So that was a lot for me to really cope. I, I had to really live those moments, like really go to the hospital, really, you know, check myself out, really take medicine every day, really break down and cry in front of my team like that. So for me to showcase that, that was, that was deep for me because in the entertainment business, everything is based off your persona, your image and, and looking cool. So for me to really just take that cover and blanket off of myself and be like, yo, like I'm out here naked. I'm like, this is me. Like that was a, a big kudos because my whole career and my whole image is based off being cool and looking strong and being the coolest person. So that's what really made me feel good about it after just seeing the response. And that's it, man. I felt like on the one hand, like I lived my whole life hiding like the, the realities of my penis, you know, and, and, <laughs> and I made it very far, like, I kind of like was just getting over the hurdle of like, you know what, I, I like just in life, like I can accept this. And I, I feel like, like as a kid, it was all I would think about. Like I would delay every sexual opportunity. I would like make up excuses of why I couldn't go, you know, to the event where all the kids are making out. And like, I was the last person at every base because I was just scared of revealing because I literally had several surgeries on my penis. And, uh, you know, I thought, you know, I was just as an adult getting over that. And then I was like, now I'm like putting a bullseye. Like any girl that is ever going to see my penis ever for the rest of my life is, you know, they're going to see this show and they're going to go into it thinking, is that true? Or is that, so it's like, but I just feel like the, you know, the show is all about, as Gaeta said, like living your truth. And I feel like it would be really shortchanging everything. Well, it's not like a, a worthy to be thing. Fair, to yeah. be fair, when we were talking about the show and you know, you, we got to know each other a little bit, maybe it was a third meeting or something. You said, look, I've got this secret about my penis, but you can't tell anybody because right. nobody knows this. <laughs> and then you told me and you said, but you have to, you can't tell anybody. I said, okay, I won't tell anybody, but that's the first scene of the show. Mm. <laughs> and 
And it was, and by the way, kudos to you, man. I mean, it is, it's, it is an amazing testament to your search for the truth that you're that brave. And it is funny. Yes. Like the details, yes. like when I describe it, it is, so it's like, you know, and, uh, but no, so I didn't really second guess it, but I did like, you know, when it came out, like, uh, you know, I was, I, I was, it, it's a little more, I was a little more uncomfortable to date. <laughs> but. Um, how much of the, of the importance is the details for something like that, for that opening scene where Dave is just like going on at, I feel like anything I say about it is going to be a double entendre, but Dave going on at length about everything <laughs> that is wrong with his penis, like how much detail do you have to include for it to be as funny as it is? Like if you just sort of tried to skirt it, would the, would the sketch not work as well as it does? I just, I feel as though comedy is the best when it's the realest and it's the realest when it's the most specific. So it's like, you know, there's another scene in season two where I'm like describing like different methods of which I masturbated. And and the, the way I'm describing them are like, you couldn't make it up. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're too random of like decision making, like to make up. So I feel- And they're so like, elaborate too. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like specificity is like where comedy like thrives. And that's where I like, I respect a joke so much more than like a guy being like, my dick sucks, which is like kind of funny. Cause then like the rapper in the show, that's the name of the song. And it's like, you know, there's, it's a whole, it's a meta thing, this whole thing, Alan. <laughs> uh, Jeff, what were conversations with standards and practices like on, on that first season? I love when those emails come in from those people. <laughs> I mean, F FX has come a long way since, uh, you know, I, the FX standard and practice. I used to say standards and practices at, at, you know, at a basic cable place is a lot like the, like the Turkish judicial system. Like there's a lot of wiggle room and you can sort of get around this and that. Um, it's gotten a lot more lax because of the streamers and all that stuff. Like when we were doing the league, there were things you definitely couldn't say. You couldn't say fuck and you couldn't do other things. Um, it's a lot, uh, it's a lot looser now. Um, but there's still, <laughs> there's still things that they're like, what I mean, it gets very anatomical mm -hmm. first. <laughs> they need to they need to cover their bases, so they need to know what part of the body you know we're actually going to see and what we can't see. Um, so we have very specific conversations about that. Um, but for the most part, I will say FX has been very, very um, sort of supportive about showing the 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 most truth that we need to show. Um, the real trouble actually has not been FX. It's been Dave and it's been Dave in a different way. So for instance, in the jail video from the finale of last year, <laughs> there's a moment where Dave exposes himself. He exposes his testicles to the crowd. Dave, not having really worked in a lot of TV said, so for this moment, um, do I have to show my testicles? I said, no, you actually don't have to show your testicles. Well, if I have to, I will. You actually can't. <laughs> we'll go to jail. Look, I hear what you're saying. I get it. I'll do it. Day, I don't. <laughs> so it's like convincing him not to do it. And I don't even want to get into what we needed to do for when he heard we needed fake poop. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm method, man. Put the, no. into my body. The, quote, the quote was this. I'm going to go back to my hotel room. I'm going to come back with a bag and you're all going to thank me. That was the quote. <laughs> Alan, I think standards and practices are actually kind of lax. Um, I'm usually sending them emails saying, I think you guys missed this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I was going to talk about the poop later, but since we've, we've already gotten to it, um, I've, I've watched a lot of television in my life and my career, and I'm pretty sure that was a TV first on camera, not only poop, but on camera diarrhea in action as it was happening. Do, first, did you realize you were breaking new ground in doing yeah. that scene? I got to say, it brings me such joy to hear like the most revered television critic acknowledge. Like I, I, I would literally say to people, they would be like, I don't think we should actually go. Like they wanted to like shoot it from like here. And I'd be like, what do you mean? We're not shooting it from here. Like, and, and, they, and I would literally say things like it's groundbreaking. I, when have you ever seen someone shit on TV? <laughs> and they would look at me like I was wrong, but I, I, it is groundbreaking. And I'm happy to see a man like yourself acknowledges it is. I mean, it means a lot to me. That brings me to my next question, which is this is a show that on the one hand, it can have you talking in intense detail about the state of your penis and it can have on screen diarrhea and all the other things that you've done. And yet it can have an episode like the one about Gata's mental health issues. It can have in the, the episode with the poop, it can have Allie's toast. Uh, it can like go to these really emotional places too. 
how did you figure out where the sweet spot was where the show could be as both blunt as it is, but also as, as emotional as it is? And how long did that take to figure out what like the little tiny target was? I mean, I don't know how long it took or, and I still think, I, I mean, I, I think we did a, an incredible job last year, but I feel like I see that we can do it even better this year. So it's like, but I agree that that is the sweet spot when you can do both of those things. And I just feel like that's, we're trying to make a show that's truthful. Right. And it's like, that's what life is. Like you hang out with me and Gata, it's, it's going to, you're going to be laughing all day because we're, we're making like, even when we just hang out and walk down the street together, it, like if you had a camera there, it would just be like a scene in the show. Like we talk the way we talk. The scenes aren't necessarily written from like a comedy writer perspective. They're written to be like truthful, like anyone could say these things in real life type of way. And in the real life, people have issues. Like me and Gata have gone through shit together. And it's like, you know, there's not, it's not just like all comedic dialogue at all times. Like fucking Gata's best friend will get shot six times. And then like, it'll be like the most insane week of our lives. And it's like, things happen. And I just know that the, the best show ever is one that, uh, portrays life in its truest spectrum. I, I want to actually go back to the, the beginning of your friendship. Uh, how did the two of you first meet? I've been gandering for a long time, you know, trying to be a rapper in the industry and stuff. So one day when I fell off on my high horse, I was just doing bad. And I just got a text message from this business management person. He's like a music manager. And he just reached out to me like, yo, I got this dope artist, Lil Dicky. He's the shit. I want you to meet him. I want y'all to rock out together. So that's just really how I met him, you know, because I just let, let me finish the story from my perspective. <laughs> so Gata comes. So basically, I was I was beginning to I, I pretty much achieved like a, a ton of viral like acclaim as a rapper. And I was at the point where I could like sell out like a, a 1200 cap room and I had never even rapped in front of like any human being in my life. Like I was too scared to even do karaoke. And I was rehearsing for my concerts. And, you know, back then I would write my raps because I was like, I was trying to prove that I was like the best rapper alive. So like every verse was like, do it, do it, do it. And I was like trying to like do it live. And I would just run out of breath, like all the time. And I just realized I needed a hype man. And uh, I, I worked with someone at the time who uh, had, Gata was a hype man for his artist back in the day. So he said, I know a guy who was a hype man for my artist, Tyga. And I said, I'd love to meet him. So Gata comes and as he says, he's always gandering. He literally shows up with two like people working for him. One of them, <laughs> like his videographer, and another one is his like assistant holding like his merch, and then just to look more important than he than he felt like he was at the time. And then I remember he came in and he and he was so energetic. He went like we were in like an office and there was like everyone was like, you know, working at their like computers, you know, and like they were all it was like a music publishing company. So they all were doing their work. And he went in and he went up to like each individual person and said, like, how are you doing? Like, how's your day? Going? Like they weren't even a part of like, this meeting. And he like and it was like and I can just tell how sweet he was. When it came time to make this show, was there was Gata always going to play himself or was there ever at any point even a thought given to having someone else do it? I always knew that I knew that I wanted it to be, I basically like, you know, I have a few friends who are like really funny, like that are just funny people, but you put a camera in front of them and they just like melt, you know? So all we had to do is make sure that didn't happen to Gata. I, I knew that there's no one that could play Gata. Like he's such a, he's, anyone that meets Gata walks away feeling like he's like that, that he like should be like the most famous man in the world. You know what I mean? Like that's his personality. And all that really needed to happen was just like put a camera in front of us, have us talk, and he just killed that. So it was just over from there. And by the way, we yeah, we did this little camera test because Dave, you were rock solid from the beginning that Gata should be Gata. So we did this little camera test and it was the two of them walking down the street. And it was like you guys talk when you're walking down the street. And Dude, I, still, I still look at that uh, shit to this day and be like, damn, that shit could have been an episode. <laughs> like, <laughs> was, it, was it good? It, it will be. be. All right, man. <laughs> Saladin, what do you remember about when it came time to actually write the Gata centric episode? It, it, at the time watching it, it was a big departure from what you guys had been doing earlier, but I assume you all had been talking about building to that. Right. So like how much of a challenge was it to go and explore these kind of issues in the context you know of, of a half hour comedy? Right. You know, by the time by the time it was it was time to actually turn that draft in, we had been talking in the rooms, not, not only about the particular emotional issues we were going to tackle in that, but we had talked about a lot of things from Day's real life, from Gator's real life that was going to play later in the season as well. So like 
the audience is experiencing it in like a sequent in like a sequential way. Um, but we had just, you know, Gata had come in and just shared a lot of stories with us. David brought other people in, you know, um, from his life um, to just share stories with us. So we were already in the mindset of that's where the strength of our show lies when we do these surprising things by the time, you know, it came, came time to write it. You know, like I would say the, the bigger surprise was before that script came up in the writing order was just in the beginning when we were like, okay, let's just, you know, talk to Dave, hear his stories, hear his real stories and meet the people in his life. You know, that's when it was like, oh my goodness, this is a lot, we have a lot of things that we can mine here that, you know, are, are unexpected. Um, and that's when we kind of start to lay them out and say, okay, well, how can we, you know, plant this here, plant this there in this episode, this episode, and then pay it off here. So like, by, by the time we, we, you know, got to what became episode five, you know, ironically enough, it was episode six at one time. Um, by the time we got there, it, I, honestly, it was, I was eager to get it out, you know, cause we've been living, we've been living with this stuff in terms of knowing about these stories and this twist and this, 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 this new side of Gator's character. We've been living with it for so long and wanting to get it out. I was excited. Okay, finally, finally, you know, now we get to put this down on the page versus, you know, um, just talking about it. But I would say credit to you, Saladin. I mean, you were very uh, insistent that like, this is something super interesting that, you know, I don't know if I would have realized that like, mm -hmm. no, talk about mental health in the black community, like, and what a way to get into it. And, and I think it actually captured one of the other things I love about the show so much, which is the more personal you get, mm -hmm. the more specifically personal you get, the more universal you can be. Right. And, and, and that's, that, that set us on a very good path for future, for future episodes. Well, speaking of the future, you guys, I know, are working on season two right now. First of all, like, how challenging is it to have to do this again under the circumstances in which we're all, all unfortunately living? Uh, it's challenging for sure. And it's like stressful and it's like weird. You know, everyone's wearing masks the whole time and it's like face shields and like they're, it's definitely it's like intense. It's like a psychological thriller now. You know what I mean? When you're out there. But um, I got to say, it's like, uh, We've, I think, I don't know, for me, we've just been sitting home for so long. Like I have a lot, even with the circumstances, personally, like last year when we shot season one, I wouldn't say that shooting the show, I had fun doing it because I felt like I, it was, I was like, I, I, at every moment was like, is this the right thing to be doing? Like, are we making the show that I, that I am envisioning in my mind? It was a very stressful, I felt like I was like fighting for my life, so to speak. And now I feel like I've, I've, learned what that is and now I can just like enjoy it and have more fun and it's like a lot more fun than sitting at home quarantining for months you know so I'm actually surprisingly having but it is so it's actually really weirdly challenging in its own ways but well also we're a we're an all location show so mm -hmm. you know which is weird I, I'm amazed anybody lets us even like scout at their house it's like because what <laughs> is that it's like hi I'm here with 10 people we're going to come into your house you don't know us we're going to touch everything but here's the good news if we like your house, we're going to come back with like 80 people. They're going to like everything. <laughs> what can you tell the audience about what's coming up in season two, what they can expect? Um, well, I would say this. Um, I would say this season we wanted to explore how more success breeds more pressure. Um, and I think we also wanted to explore a little bit as everyone gets a little more successful what does that mean for Dave and his support group, right? Everyone, this whole machine was sort of built to support Dave, but what happens when that support's not there because they're doing other things? And what does that mean for Dave? And he's still, he's had a little bit of success. He's got this, he's got this, this deal, but he's got to make an album. And what is, and what is that pressure? And can he actually write enough songs to do it? I think this year is, is, is more, more psychological. Uh, and it's more of like, an arc of everything like it's you know there, there's less like one-offs you know what I mean like everything's like pretty tied together and I just think on a macro level like it's not the a bulk of our first rodeos anymore like this was literally me and Gator's first time ever doing anything of the sort you know what I mean so I just feel like it's invaluable having a season under your belt compared to now and I think everything is just going to be really elevated and I really feel like I, I care a lot more about the art of filmmaking now which is great. Well, guys, I cannot wait to see it. I'm sure everyone in the audience feels the same way. Uh, Dave, season two will premiere on FXX and FX on Hulu in 2021. Thank you all so much for doing this. 
Thanks for having us. Thank you. Really fun. Always Bye, guys. Fun. Hi, I'm Dave. Please watch. Please. I'm Lil Diggy. No, shut up. I am Dave. Please watch.